Hello and welcome to the Matt Lagore Show. I'm your host, Matt Lagore. On the Matt Lagore Show, I specialize in talking about being an entrepreneur. Uh, you know, entrepreneur is someone who usually has their own business or is a self-starter or has a passion for something. And really what I like to talk about is passion or having a purpose in life. You know, I think a lot of people, we see them every day, they don't have much purpose and much passion in life. And I think we've all been there from time to time. And it, it, it tends to be a uh, unhappy life when you don't have a good purpose. And I'm always r reminded of children. When you see a child, they have so much passion. They have so much passion for everything they do. It can be a TV show, it can be a game. They have passion, they love what they do. And over time, I don't know what happens, but we kind of lose that passion. And I was thinking about that today as far as like what I had for passion when I was a kid. And one thing I had a super passion for were these right here. I don't know if you can see it. Hot Wheels. I loved Hot Wheels. Uh, Matchbox was another company. I loved Matchbox. And I had the carrying case. I had a little suitcase that I would carry my Hot Wheels and my Matchbox in. And then I had Hot Wheel tracks that I would drive my cars on. And, you know, even to this day, when I walk by the display for Hot Wheels or Matchbox, I stop and take a look and I go, hey, that's kind of cool. I think I'll buy that one. This one here is a, a 69 Dodge Charger 500. Beautiful car. I wish I had it. I have it like this. But what struck me with that was, over time, you start to lose your passion for things. And every once in a while, you see something that gives a reminder to it. And recently, I did some work for someone. I got a call. They asked me to come down to their shop. They wanted me to fix a dent in a car. And I got to the place, and from the outside, it was unassuming, just a mechanic shop. I opened the door, and what did I see? I saw full-size Hot Wheel Matchbox cars. Cars, one of a kind. Cars, there's, no, there's not two of them, there's only one of them. And if it wasn't a, a one of a kind, it was a customized car. And I was mesmerized by it. I loved it. It brought me back to that time when I had a passion. And that place was called Ace Performance in Tewksbury, Massachusetts. And today I have the owner uh, of uh, Ace Performance, Con uh, Bear Connor, yep. on the show with me. Bear, Thanks I went, for having me. you're welcome. Thanks for being on the show. And I got to say, that was my first impression when I walked into your That's shop. That's great. I said, my goodness, we got full-size Hot Wheels here, full-size Matchbox. And every time I come, it's a little something a little different. Sure. You know? Absolutely. So uh, just, why don't you just tell us a little bit. I know we, you don't specialize in Hot Wheels, <laughs> uh, but you specialize in performance. So what, what do you do? So um, my name is Bear Connor, um, and I own Ace Performance in Tewksbury, Mass. And we specialize in service performance for any make and model. Um, so we could have anything from a German car, from a Porsche, to we actually have a 68 Dodge Charger that we're doing a lot of work to uh, currently. So it, it doesn't matter um, you know, what the vehicle is, it's, it's basically we help owners link up that passion and make the car what they dreamed about, whether it's they're going after nostalgia or they're going after being the best or having the best performance out there. That's kind of how we work with our clients, mm -hmm. um, just to uh, you know, kind of fill that fill that void, something that they can't necessarily buy, you know, off the showroom floor, right. or something that's that that time has passed and they need to they need to relive their childhood or 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 get that Matchbox car in, in real life, so that they can they can drive it or mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty much what we do. Did you have a passion for cars when you were young? I always did. Yeah. So. I, I, I love cars. I wasn't one of these guys that, um, you know, really tinkered on cars and, and built cars and took them apart. I did to a certain extent. Um, my grandfather was a mechanical engineer. So I kind of got, got it from that aspect. He had um, classic MGs. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I learned to drive my first standard. And that's kind of where I got some of the automotive passion. Um, I didn't really, it started kind of later in life when I started getting into this. After I went to college, I worked in the finance world for 10 years. Really? And, um, and then after big, uh, the, the Lehman Brothers debacle, mm -hmm. I, I found myself, um, you know, kind of moving on from finance. And I said, what am I going to do? And that's when I said, I want to be my own boss. 
and I want to chase my passion. And that's where I ended up with, with, uh, with Ace Performance. And now, did you? Okay, so that, that's a big, big change. <laughs> finance to sure. automotive. All right. So um, anybody in the finance world would have probably told you that's a really bad financial choice you're making. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You it, must have even been saying that yeah, to yourself. <laughs> yeah, I was. I mean, it, the 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 road to to get to the point where I've got you know a, the the trust in people and a variety of different cars and and everything it it it's it was definitely a long and hard road to build up you know brand recognition and mm-hmm. and, and reputation yeah um so you know it it definitely goes from you know being uh, having a steady income in working in finance to starting your own business but you know as an entrepreneur you know that that's just not always that easy. So did you just start out uh, working on uh, a couple of cars by yourself? Uh, yes. Someone said, hey, can you, can you help me out? Or, or how, did you, how did you start? Like, what was your first money-making job? So we um, so started, um, I actually came and I, I came into the business. Ace Performance wasn't really a, a true business. Um, but it was kind of more of a of a hobby business, and I, I joined up with a partner, um, had the partner, and then I said, "There's something with this Ace Performance, and this is what I really want to do." And so I developed the the business, and we started. Um, you know, I think one of our first cars was a was a E46 M3 um, BMW that we uh, supercharged. You know, basically the car made. 700 horsepower. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was kind of one of the first big project cars for Ace. Um, since then, we've done a lot of high horsepower cars, um, and we've also taken care of people's daily drivers. Right? Yeah. They they trust me to build these crazy cars, and they trust me just to keep their family safe in their station wagons or mm-hmm. um, SUVs. Yeah, but they'd like it to be. Just a little faster. A little than faster, the neighbors, right? Yeah, a little faster. Maybe better wheels. Um, you know, maybe it's maybe it's dressed up, or you know, they they look to me um, to to have the solution. So if they get a dent on their car, they're bringing their car to me, and then they're saying, "Who's your guy?" And that's where I say, "I'm going to bring Matt in, and Matt's going to fix it, and it's going to be perfect again." Mm-hmm. Nice. So now you not only build performance vehicles, uh, repair vehicles, maintain vehicles to some level, uh, but you're also a dealer too, aren't you? Sure. Yeah. But, no, but not just for any manufacturer. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. yeah we've uh, we sell this uh, car brand called the Ariel Atom, and for the car guys out there, they will have known the iconic uh, episode with Jeremy Clarkson driving an Ariel Atom. It has no windshield, and his face is just basically sucked back from the acceleration and the wind. It's a it's a fantastic episode. But those are the cars. They're they're small. They're originally a British car. Um, they're actually built here in the U.S. There's a, a licensed manufacturer, so we sell the Aerial Atom and the Aerial Nomad here. Mm-hmm. Um, and are you the exclusive dealer in the Northeast? Uh, Northeast, East? correct. Yeah, yep. All right. Yep. All right. There are only a couple dealers in the country, and yeah. uh, and and I have the Northeast territory. How how did that happen? Um, again, that was just a, a networking thing. I was at a at a trade show, and it was a, it was a connection through someone that I knew. And in order to support a car like the Aerial Atom, um, the the clients either like to take them on a track, or they like to take them to they have them in their in their car collection. And so Ariel had a very specific um, uh, kind of criteria for what their dealers were. Mm-hmm. Right, their dealers needed to be proficient enough to take their cars to the racetrack and showcase how the cars work. And and along with my passion, you know, driving cars on the racetrack has been something that I've developed more and more over the year. Um, so now I'm a, a a driving school instructor for a number of different clubs. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll go to road courses all around the country. Um, you know, mostly I'm in the Northeast because I've got a business and it's hard to travel. Um, down south, but I've been anywhere from Watkins Glen to Daytona to Barber Motorsports to, um, 
you know, club the new club motorsport here in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of great road road courses. So the Aerial Atom, that's how I it fits in. Got I've that. got that kind of model where I can service the car. I can also help take the clients to the track so they learn how to use the car to the best of their ability and the best of the car's ability. So basically with a car, there's only really two things that matter about a car. The first thing is matters how it looks, right? Sure. How does it look? How does it look? It looks good. If it's clean, it's shined, it's different, right? And the other thing is to drive it, right? There's only really two things that in the end you want to do with a car. You want it to look good and you want to drive it and have it perform at whatever level it needs to perform at. Like I drive a, uh, a Dodge Ram Longhorn. All right, that needs to perform at a nice, comfortable level, sure. cruising. I want it to be have some pickup and everything, but I'm not taking that to the track. Right now, the early Adams, on the other hand, I'm not throwing any tools in the trunk of that thing. No, we're no, doing no. Speci yep. it's specifically for yep. for, for driving, it's for, driving experience, for driving and driving experience. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's that's one of the keys. Right, it's all about it's all about the experience, and it's all about maximizing your time and and enjoying the experience. Um, and that's kind of where the Aerial Atom fits into my business because it's, it's unique and it, uh, it, it provides that experience that, you know, my customers are looking for. You know, one of the things that I was kind of taken with last time I was in your shop was you had that 68 Charger. Yeah. All right. It looked, it's very similar to the one from the movie Bullet. Yep. Uh, for anybody over, um, or I should say, uh, yeah, anyone over 40 knows, <laughs> knows Bullet. Under, under 40, you might not know what I'm talking about, but it's a famous car. Um, in that car you had there, I looked at it, I was like, oh, wow, that's the car. But, obviously, some modifications. It's sure. not that big, sloppy powerhouse that just barrels straight ahead. This thing had new suspension, new wheels. And then you said it had a Hellcat engine in it. And yeah. you said it came in what's called a Hell box, right? Hell crate. Hell crate. Hell that's crate, it, yeah. right? A Hell crate. Yeah. So, now, that, like, I was blown away by that, all right? Because that was just awesome. So, is that your preferred customer, someone who's bringing in the car and says, hey, look, take my old car or take my car and I want you to make it into a, a beast, a street-worthy beast or a racing beast. What would you say your ideal customer I wouldn't is? say that's, that's my ideal customer. Um, it, it's a great customer to have. Um, my business is built on, like, you don't have to come in and, and be like, I need this project that's way over the top, yeah, right? Right. Um, you know, my ideal customer is someone that, that wants to work with me and and meet their goal whether it's you know just putting a, a tune on their car and lowering the suspension and putting wheels on it to you know just again simple maintenance so my ideal customer can can range in terms and it's not necessarily okay this is the guy that's going to go to the extreme mm -hmm. um so really, it's just my ideal customer is someone that comes to me. You know, primarily we're a we're a referral business, as you've said. My my storefront is very nondescript, and that's kind of done by by reason. Um, you know, it it allows me to give all of my customers the best attention mm -hmm. at all times. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I can really focus on their needs. And mm -hmm. I've got a a good crew of guys um, that that know each customer individually, they're on a first name basis, and they can, they can just make sure that they're in tune with whatever the final product is that we want to deliver. Yeah. You know, nowadays, it is so hard to get someone to do work on your vehicle and do a good job. Absolutely. I, I brought my truck to uh, ha have some service done on it. I was so disappointed in what happened in the final product that came out. And the bottom line was no quality control. Like, after uh, person A did the work, person B didn't look the thing over, sure. didn't look the vehicle over and find any 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 shortcomings. You know, now I noticed with your guys, they're all very like, very into what they're doing, yeah, just absolutely. very into what they're doing, which is a really great sign when you have the. The, the, the owner, the boss, into what he's doing, and then he's got employees that are into what they're doing. I can see it. I can hear it. I'm, when I'm in there, I'm, I can hear these guys talking, and there's, there's, there's love for what they do there. Yeah, it's, it, it's definitely a passion. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a couple different models um, in auto repair shops, and, and uh, you know, you kind of have to find your niche. You know, there's the, the dealer model where someone works for the dealer, but what they're doing is they're working on volume. My goal at ACE is not necessarily, it's to maintain 
a, a good volume um, through the shop. Obviously, I need to pay my bills and, and grow the business. Yeah. But it's also about quality, right? And making sure that we test drive vehicles, that we identify and address the customer's concerns and maybe find other concerns that they should be aware of um, so that they can they can budget and plan, you know, whether it's a it's a, a track car or a daily driver. So they can understand, okay, this is what's going on. I think I'm gonna need new tires, you know, before the winter. You know, people like to know that rather yeah. than get that big surprise and say, oh my gosh, I need to spend X number of dollars on my car you know, Christmas is coming. I, I don't, I don't have that money. What do I need to do? Yeah. And, and, and it's always a shame to say, sorry, kids, I, I needed the new sports suspension for, for the Beamer, <laughs> you know, next year, I'm sure there'll be some good gifts, but you can ride on Christmas. We'll go for a ride. Right, right, you know? right. Yeah. We'll go for a ride. It'll, it'll be good. I, I had a mechanic though, that was like that. He was great. He's, he's retired now. I'd bring the car in for a problem and he'd give me a list afterwards and say, you got four things here. None of them major but you're going to need to do these things. So you let me know and we'll do them. And we, it was constant. I, and, and I ended up bringing my car in more often because I had that list, but it wasn't pressing. Sure. And I, and I knew he would take care of it and he Absolutely. would maintain it. That's a really great service to do for people. And when I hear that, I know that you're into customer satisfaction and quality, that you'll make a list of, of stuff that this car could use, but not right now. Right. Maybe next time or the time after. Yeah, it's all about it's all about communication with the customers, right? And that's that's something that gets that gets lost, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I'm I'm very well in tune with, uh, you know, emailing my customers, calling my customers, uh, sending them photo updates of what's going on with their project or with their car, so so that or putting them in a gallery so they can just log in and say, oh, this happened to my car. This is great. That's nice. Um, it it really is a it's a it's an easy touch with the technology we have today, um, you know. Just f so there's more connection to the again the experience, right? When when someone's having a car built, it's they want the end product, but they also like like some of the experience. They don't like to hear all of the experience, but they like like to know you know kind of what's going on and what the challenges are. So little updates. Picture updates. Picture updates. Half a dozen email pictures. Updates, yep. Email every yep. few days. Yep. Nice, nice. Okay, so uh, average guy, guy, um, well, say a guy like me, likes cars, loves, likes cars a lot, enjoys them. Not the kind of guy that's going to go out and buy a car two or three times a year, but likes them, wants to get a sports car, and he says, Ace, I mean, Bear, at Ace. What should I buy? I want a sports car, something that me and the wife can drive around in uh, on the weekend, or you know, take the kids. But you know, I don't want I don't want a Corvette. You know, what what would you recommend for me? So, again, it it depends on budget. But I have this question happen all the time, and uh, and and one of the the good things about my business again is the strong network. So I I work closely with guys from. Um, Hooniverse and Road and Track and some of the other auto blogs. And these guys are driving cars all the time. They're driving new cars all the time. And so I can get a lot of feedback and, and help narrow down the focus for someone. So if someone's like, I just want a car, um, you know, I want a car that I can go up and, and just, you know, drive the Kangamangas Highway, um, you know, and then cruise back. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, now we just figure out how does, how does luggage work? How does the other things work? Um, and then I can really say, okay, this car, you know, I can manage their expectations on, you know, what's the maintenance level for that car? If you're just driving it a couple days a, a, a year or if you're driving it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't matter if it's a, a Corvette or a Porsche or, um, you know, a Mazda Miata. Um, I kind of have the, uh, I'm in tune with what different cars are out there and what options there are for people to, to kind of fit their budget and mm -hmm. then fit what the experience they're looking for is. So you're going to take a little, uh, get a little information from the person, say, what do you like to do? Where do you like to go? Absolutely. And then you're going to kind of direct them towards a, a make or a model, right? Absolutely. Based on kind of my experience with, with those cars and, 
then I'll also, you know, kind of gauge like, you know, some cars, as we know, require more maintenance than others. So I need to manage their propensity to handle uh, when the car doesn't start for them, you know, or something happens. That, that reminds me, I have a friend who's very into BMWs. He loves BMWs. And so he's like an authority on BMWs. So if you have a question about it, you call him up and he'll, he'll have an answer for you. He'll find an answer for you. And one thing, he gets a lot of calls from people going, I want to buy a BMW. What's the best one? And before he even answers that, he goes, oh, what do you drive now? Oh, I drive a Honda. Oh, do you like that Honda? Yeah, I love it. It starts up every morning. So it doesn't cost me anything. He goes, well, then you're not going to like a BMW. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he goes, no, are definitely. you willing to put a couple hundred dollars a month into your car? Because that's what probably it's going to average out yep. to, you know? So I like that that you kind of gauge your customer, give them a little information up front, you know, and uh, then direct them in the right direction. Now, if you had to pick the best performance car on the road today, th that's not like $200,000, you know, not an Austin Martin, yeah. but like, uh, what is it? Is it a, is it a, uh, is it a, uh, some, one of the, is it a Corvette? Is it a BMW? Is it a Mercedes? What would you say? I mean, uh you know, I'm I'm actually a BMW guy, mm -hmm. so we do a ton of BMW work at Ace Performance. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I'm also a family guy, right? So, I, I personally, I I love the European makes. I would, um, I would, kind of lean towards a new M3 right now, mm -hmm. as uh, as one of those cars that, you know, you can drive, you can take it on the Kangamangas, you can put snow tires on it. You can drive it skiing, it's, and then you can get that experience. Um, so kind of, you know, for new cars today, I would seriously look at a, at a you know, for something that's not over the top price-wise. Yeah. I would look at, uh, at a new BMW. Nice. Okay. I noticed you drive a BMW yep. station wagon. Station wagon, yeah. All right. But I also noticed that it's set up, looks like, a little slick. Yep. All right. Uh, it, it's it's set up to ride. You know, yes. it, it, it back. You know, if this was fifty years ago, I'd say it was set up to run some moonshine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's definitely. I mean, I I drive a a BMW wagon. Actually, my wife drives a BMW wagon. Yeah. And both of those cars are uh, are stick shift. Yeah. So you know, finding a wagon and stick shift in in the U.S. is just basically unheard of because no one in the u.s wants to uh wants to manually shift their cars uh -huh. you know let alone in a wagon <laughs> when they've got kids in the back so i'm kind of an anomaly um a lot of car guys love the idea of having a wagon with manual and yeah. you know putting suspension and big horsepower in it which is you know kind yeah of well it kind of because you're, you're kind of getting the best of both worlds sure right? yeah. yeah i i when I, my car was in for service they gave me a um a, do a, a compass, a, a Dodge Jeep Compass, five-speed. Right. And the first thing a guy asked me is, it's a five-speed, is that a problem? I go, listen, I'm over 50, it's not a problem, all right? Because <laughs> yeah, nowadays, with that, yeah. Yeah. But, but I hadn't driven a stick shift in a long time, and I was like, man, this is, this is kind of a lot of work, you know, right, especially sure. in traffic, you know? But, but there was also a good feeling to it. There is something about shifting yeah, that car again, that, that, yeah, that back feels to that right. experience. Right. It's it, you've got so many things going with like the the autonomous cars and Teslas and, you know, the the auto driving modes and whatnot. That's great. That serves a purpose. Um, but people still want that experience. Right. And the, the the you know, the the ability for them to come to guys like me and and say, you know, because in 10 years they may not be able to buy a gasoline powered car. Mm -hmm. um, but we're still always going to be able to to kind of reach back into our archives and say, okay, here are the cars that kind of fill that experience, right? Here's a car that you can actually control. You can actually shift the transmission. It's it's you that's actually putting the inputs in and and you pressing the brakes and 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 pressing the gas. Mm -hmm. Have you driven an electric car? I have, yes. Unbelievably fast. Yes. Or quick, I should say. Not Just, they're not always fast as they are quick. Just immediate torque. Do you think that um, in the future, you know, in our lifetime, that, I mean, obviously it's, it's right there, we see it. Autonomous driving, electric vehicles. Um, do you think there'll always be a place for a combustion engine? I think so. 
Yeah. I think so. I mean, you know, that's what I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm hoping, You're banking busy, on? Busy, you know, <laughs> keeping my model going. But I, I think at some point, um, at some point there'll be a switch. And, you know, some of the information that, that I've gathered about combustion engine cars, you know, that kind of, kind of gets fallen off as the generations go. And the techs that are getting out of school, right, they're, they're working on Teslas. They're working on this. They've never really had to do the combustion engine diagnostics, right? So they're so they've lost that, right? Yeah. And uh, so, you know, to keep some of these older cars, I mean, you can see, you know, how how car prices are going and collector car prices. You know, people are going to hold on to those cars. Yeah. Um, like I said, the '68 Dodge Charger. Yeah. Or 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 the right? uh, the '69. Dodge Charger. Yeah, it, no, right. You said 68, right? But th th this is it, isn't it? Isn't yeah. that the car right there? It's pretty much the car. Except yep. it's black. Yep, yep, it's black. Yeah, okay. But but guys are going to, this car right now is go, is only going up in price. Absolutely. And and, and the, the, the further it goes into higher technology, the higher that price is going to go, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Because, yeah. you know, at some point, if uh, say fifty percent of the cars are electric on the road in the next twenty years, you know, a, a uh, I mean, I find it to be so um, baffling technology how fast things change. Sure. You know, I my 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 truck's a two thousand thirteen, and they upgraded the software in it and it gave me some more things. But unfortunately, a friend of mine bought a two thousand nineteen. And it makes mine look like an analog <laughs> cellular phone, you know. Sure. It's just the technology is amazing. But to go back and see something old that works, that's you know, it's, you got to turn the heat on with a lever. It's kind of amazing, you know. There is something about it. Yep, I 100% uh, agree. And I think that, you know, I I, I don't think that's going to get lost. Mm -hmm. I think that. You know, people will uh, kind of move on and say, "Okay, we're going to maximize our efficiency with you know autonomous cars and electric cars." Um, but the the need for combustion engine cars is is still going to be there, and and people are going to still feel that nostalgia to to relive you know when they were growing up or their childhood or you know, um, and and those cars are still going to have a place and. And not going to all end up in the in the crusher or the salvage yard. <laughs> I would think, though, with your being a performance business, that even if things did start to go the other way, and uh, say they outlawed all combustion engines, you know, by uh, 2050 or something like that, you would have a whole new realm of work by converting combustion engines to electric, sure. right? I mean, yeah. the guy that has a 68 Charger, he's still going to want it. You know, I still don't want to drive it for, for the looks of it. Ah, put an electric motor in it. Yeah, and there's there's a lot of that technology that I actually have have been uh, have been looking into, um, and it's not that I don't want to embrace the electric stuff. I realize that you know we've got Formula E, we've got an all electric racing series out there now. Um, that's kind of the that's the future, right? So we have to we have to embrace it, but then also you know make sure that we can hold on to you know, what we've known for so long. Yeah, all right. Well, we're coming down to the end of the show. Ace, just could you just tell us your location, how to get in touch with you? Sure. Um, you, can, uh, you can find us at uh, Ace Performance. We're in uh, uh, Tewksbury, Massachusetts. Um, phone number is 978-710-3116. Uh, you can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on um, the uh, our website, which is aceperformancesystems.com. Mm -hmm. We'll put this all up on the screen. People will be able to see it. Absolutely. All right, awesome. So uh, if you want to um, customize your vehicle, if you want to take your station wagon and make it a sleeper, uh, a sleeper, sleeper, red light sleeper, bring it down to Bear at Ace Performance. Uh, Ace, thank you very much for being All on right. the show. Great. All right, Thanks I really I look forward to coming back in again and yeah. seeing that, that 68 Absolutely. Charger. And uh, you know, maybe you can soup up my uh, Dodge Ram someday. We'll do it. All right, thanks. Thanks. All man. right, we want to thank you for watching the Matt Lagore Show. You can check out the Matt Lagore Show on YouTube, uh, the, uh, Matt, the Matt Lagore Show at YouTube, and also on Facebook, the Matt Lagore Show. All right, thanks. We'll see you on the next one.